back to educator.com. This is the life science course and today's lesson is on plant classification. The objectives for today's lesson will be number one, how are plants classified? Number two, how have plants been able to adapt for survival on land? And number three, compare and contrast vascular and non-vascular plants. Let's start by talking about why we should study plants in the first place. The plant species is one of the largest types of uh, organisms on earth and there's so many different types of plants and they live all over the earth. Now there are certain scientists who dedicate their career to studying different types of plants. Those scientists are called botanists and botany is the study of plant life. All in all, scientists have been able to name, identify, and describe over 300,000 different types of plant species. Uh, plants are obviously so important to life. Without plants, we wouldn't be able to live as humans uh, because they provide what we need in order to breathe, which is oxygen. But I think about plants, when I think about plants, I think that they also um, are so important to us because of the fact that they provide uh, our primary food source. Plants are also used for medicines, housing, furniture, books, and clothing. You can probably think of several uh, ways that plants have contributed to your life on a daily basis. Now all plants have certain characteristics that uh, they share and then there's obviously plants that have very different characteristics from the others. Let's start by talking about the similar characteristics that all plants share. First of all, all plants are what we call multicellular. That means they're made of many cells and those cells come together to perform the plant function. Also, plants are eukaryotes. Eukaryotes or eukaryotic cells are cells that contain a nucleus. The nucleus is like the brain of the cell. It helps to direct uh, all of the different functions that go on within the cell. And eukaryotes also have what we call organelles. Organelles are structures within the cell that help it to function. They all have specific jobs. Um, and so eukaryotes are special because um, they are able to be very specific to a special type of job. Animals are also eukaryotes. Um, and some fungi are also eukaryotes. The next plant characteristic that all plants share are they all have what we call a cell wall. Now, I'm going to draw a very general, simple cell um, that is just a circle. And inside of that circle is going to be our nucleus. So this circle would be the cell. And this circle here would be the nucleus. And for the most part, animal, all eukaryotic cells look just like this. They have the nucleus. They have the, what we call the cell membrane, which is basically the outer layer of the cell and inside they could have different organelles that do different things. Now the plant cell is different from the animal cell because it has this very uh, rigid cell wall. As you can see here in this picture, uh, the cell wall is outside of the organelles and the nucleus of the cell. That cell wall is important because it helps the plant to retain water and it helps that plant to keep certain nutrients inside. Um, all plants definitely need water. In fact, the first plants, which we'll discuss later, started out living in water. And so it's very important to know that all plants, at some point, even in the plants that may be in dry desert areas, need water. And the last thing, and actually 
the most important function of plants is that they all go through the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process of using sunlight energy, which is the energy source of plants, carbon dioxide, which I'm going to uh, just write CO2 because that's the chemical formula for carbon dioxide, and water to make food. Plants are special and they're different from animal cells and animals because they are able to make their own food. But animals, like humans, benefit because we can eat those plants um, and get that same source of energy. So here is just a diagram of photosynthesis. It shows the sun and uh, the carbon dioxide and water entering into the plant. The water goes through the roots. Um, and the carbon dioxide and sunlight energy are kind of soaked up and absorbed into the leaves. And that plant has something called chlorophyll, which is a pigment uh, that um, processes all of these things so that the plant can release oxygen into the atmosphere, which is what we need in order to breathe. And glucose is the form of sugar used and made within the plant. So sugar is formed and oxygen is released after the process of photosynthesis. 